Welcome back everybody, this is Steve KM9G. If you saw in the last video, we got ARMBN running, but why not Raspbian? Why not Raspberry Pi OS? That seems like a more natural course of action for this because of all of the ham support for Raspberry Pi OS. You could run ham clock on this, you could run KM4 ACK's build a Pi, you can run KM6 LYW's DigiPi, you can run ham Pi. There's about a different million different ways you can run Pi software on here. Anyway, um, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to have quite a collection of stuff going on. I have the uh, original Zygu firmware, I have the Armbian load, I have the Raspberry Pi load, I have an adapter to put in there, and this is a fantastic little uh, SD card holder. I will put a link in the description down below for something like this. Um, but it makes it so I don't lose these guys because these things are tiny. So this is the one with Raspbian on it. This is a 32 gig card, it'll be just fine. We'll go ahead and stick that in there. We'll do the same procedure we did before. And we will get out of WSJTX. And we are back at the root prompt, at the login prompt, with our super secret root password. I'm gonna go ahead and power down the radio. Then we need to do the same thing. We need to interrupt the boot process when it comes on. So let's power it up. And then start pressing Control C when you see the, the boot process come up. I'm gonna pull up my notepad, which has the instructions for me. Let's see which one of these it is. I think it's this one. It will be in the description down below either way. And we're not quite yet finished with the boot image for Raspberry Pi, but I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek that we're working on it because I know people are gonna be asking, why didn't you do Raspberry Pi? Well, I did, here's why. the SD card in and let's give it a rip. And you can see it's upside down on the screen. And we are ready to log in for Raspberry Pi. And there's our mouse pointer. And there is our Raspberry Pi desktop turned sideways. And I did go through the standard built-in uh, display settings and it does not work to rotate it up normally. And a couple of other things we're gonna need to do. The built-in display is 800 by 480. The WSJTX configuration screens for FT8 are off the screen and you can't press the okay button easily. There's a way to make the desktop bigger than the screen. So when you move the mouse down, the screen moves up out of the way and then you can hit the button. Um, but this is just a, a quick proof of concept. Log in as user pi, log in with password, the default that comes with it. And we're logged in as Raspberry Pi user. Can we do HTOP? Is that installed by default? Oh, yes it is. Oh, look at that. It's all text mode. So four core processor, one gig of RAM, no swap file setup and a bunch of processes running by default, but this is all basic Raspberry Pi stuff. Now that we've gotten this far, the sky is the limit. What does proc CPU info say? Generic DT-based system, ARMv7 processor Rev5. Excellent. So uh, the next step with Raspberry Pi OS, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi OS would be to get the display fixed so that it's rotated in the proper orientation, Wi-Fi running, and see if it can see the um, built-in radio stuff. Also mixer. So let's see, select sound card. Can I even do that over a serial console? Oh, I can do it over a serial console right there. We've got in, out, and through. And then there's all 329 different TTY devices. Oh my goodness. So we'd have to figure out which one is the uh, connection to the internal serial port. But either way, the point was to show that it can be done and it can be done. The commands are in the description down below. This is the latest version of Raspberry Pi. This is Bullseye. Um, either way, there's a video over there I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome.